Hello, and once again, welcome to my workshop. So this video was a continuation of the last video where we put this piece of uh, work for this uh, miniature grandfather clock uh, into our cam. So today, we're going to cut it on the CNC machine into this lovely piece of myrtle. So the first cut is going to do something like this. I'll actually zoom you in. So the first cut is going to be a peck drilling, and they call it peck drilling because, well, it's going to have an action like a bird, and it will peck drill the hole. What that means is it'll plunge into the material about two millimeters, then retract back out to clear the, the, the spoils out, then go back in again and come out uh, each time clearing the spoils out, otherwise it compacts on the end of the tool. So it'll be something like this. So you notice the tool is going in and retracting out, going in, retracting out until it reaches all the way through to the bottom. And that's the first tool path, the second tool path is the uh, cut out of this and this is what the tool will do to cut that out and go down two millimeters each time I've got it doing uh, one segment at a time here and I'm doing it sort of manually so it gives you some idea of how the machining operation is going to take place and there you are. So we're going to do that and of course then we're going to turn the material over and cut the face of the clock. Uh, but first um, I just want to draw your attention or show you something that uh, I picked up um, Monday actually um, and it's going to be the subject of a couple of videos after I've done this one. So I'll just Swing the camera around and, and show you. Well, actually, I'll show you. First of all, on here, some of you may recognize this. It is the famous DeWalt 740 radial arm saw. Well, I picked one up. Now, they don't actually make these, I understand, anymore. I noticed one came up on the weekend uh, locally. And um, I couldn't resist it and went out and bought so it. So I'll just turn the camera around and show you what it is. And there it is. Now this is really a tradesman's tool, uh, or a very, very serious handyman's tool. And uh, it's what I would call a ban find. Um, it has absolutely seen better days. Um, I, I don't even know if it runs. Uh, I just bought it, um, you know, sort of on site, on spec. And as you can see, it is uh, it's in a very rough condition. Uh, this is all rusty. Uh, it's actually, th th this is actually cast iron and there's like a r twin rail in here that this carriage runs on. And all the bearings are all seized up. So I'm going to have to um, uh, dismantle a lot of this and uh, put new bearings in or whatever is required. Um, and this is a DeWalt radial arm saw. This is what's commonly known as the 740 power shop. Um, and uh, I've been looking for one for some years uh, at the right price. And this was at the right price. And so I shall be reconditioning this, um, but what I want to do is, I don't want to respray it or anything like that. I just want to clean the rust off it, clean the aluminium up. It's beautiful. I want to keep the paint original if I can. So clean all the dirt off it, check the motor out, uh, and uh, get it all ready, and put new brushes in if necessary. And um, hopefully the switch is going to be fine. And just make all the mechanism work. I did actually get this to move yesterday. No, it's not going to. 
No, it's all it's all locked up solid. So uh, I got a bit of work to um, to do to it to get this to a serviceable uh, product. But um, I um, I hope you're going to enjoy that. Anyway, it's probably going to take about two videos. So we'll get into that um, after this uh, this job that we're doing. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment, because we are going to machine, first of all, the back of this. Now, I haven't made my mind up whether I'm going to put the clock face in first or whether I'm going to bore the, um, bore the recess out first. Uh, but I'll make that up in a minute. Uh, and then but what we need to do is put this board square on the table and then do the first process, then turn it over and do the second process. Well, that's going to be the back, I think. So that's what we're going to do now. And I'm, I've made a small jig, or a simple jig, to actually enable that to happen. And all it is is a 90 degree, 90 degree cut out of there and this piece that I've cut out has spare. So what I'm going to do is line that up on the board or the, the, the uh, waste sheet uh, nice and square and screw it down on here. Then position this material inside it like so. Then put this piece solidly up against it in here. So I can machine this side first, then take it out, turn it over, and then know it's going to be in exactly the same alignment on the machine. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so we know that's nice and square to the front edge. Everything's worked from the front edge or the side. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and I know this is running parallel up the table now. So that's quite firm in there, but to make sure that it doesn't, uh, it, look, it's not going to move. But what I'm going to do is just put a couple of um, um, tabs on here to hold it firm. And this is all we need to hold this material in here. This is a little bit of overkill really, but... Always have something to support the other side of your, your clamp too. If you have it up like this, sometimes it can work work its way loose. So it's better to have it either level or the end of this actually down onto the material like this. It's better to have it angled that way than that way or parallel. Okay, so what I want to measure, um, I want to come into the middle of the material here and um, so, and I know the program starts this bottom left hand corner here and we've got a hundred millimeter by a hundred millimeter to work with. So uh, what we're going to do is mark out this point here and we only have to do it for, for, for this side here uh, and then it's just a matter of turning over. So uh, I'm
a three, three flute, uh, eight millimeter, uh, extended um, end mill. So we're going to put them inside here. And actually, you can put them in quite a, quite a length because we don't want the full lengths stuck out. And then put him here, like so. So all I have to do now is re-register the Z height only. I do have um, a Z height tool setter, but um, not everybody has those. So uh, I prefer to um, show you know how to do this the easy way with a bit of paper as well. So uh, here we are. We'll just bring the tool down. Shut this down a little bit and. That's about it. So I'll just uh, zero that now in mark three and we'll set up for the cut. But before we do the cut, we better turn the material over. And of course it's in exactly the same position now, except left to right side. Okay, so this is OP2 on this side, and I've actually set the Z0 down just over half a millimetre lower than what the surface of this is, because uh, I want to be sure of actually going all the way through this material. So this is OP2 on this side now. Okay, I'm quite happy with that actually. Oop. Just take a bit of a burr off that. And that is a perfect hole, or a perfect pocket for the face of our very, very clean, very, very clean cut. Well, I hope you've liked the video today of the machine of the Roman numerals. Um, and incidentally, it was, there was a question that my wife put up, actually, um, about the number four being four eyes. Um, now, it is correct. Um, what I've noticed is that um, some Roman clock faces or Roman numeral clock faces has um, a, a 1V here. 
and others have four eyes, or should I say an ivy. Um, they're both correct. As I understand it, um, there was some controversy, I suppose, of between the Greeks and the Romans. Um, so it's, uh, it goes back probably a couple of thousand years. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so there's someone out there that probably knows the right answer, but that's all I can gather. So um, there you are. That's how to cut uh, Roman numerals in a nice piece of myrtle and how to cut a very accurate pocket and how to line the piece of material up by using a very simple jig and being able to turn it over and know you're exactly in, the, in exactly the right place. So thank you for joining me for this, um, this video and uh, the next video and the final video in this, this series for this miniature grandfather clock uh, will be me um, completing the body and um, putting it together. So thank you for joining me. Don't forget, press like, subscribe to my channel. That's always a very good thing to do. And um, I'll see you again next time. And uh, bye for now.